friends my name is ram morla please search for me on linkedin with my name and of course do follow me on twitter at xbindias xray bravo echo alpha november delta sierra i do uh, i am very active in the social media and i do publish lot of articles and lot of tweets so please do follow me if you are interested anyway today i will be discussing about hadoop data platform uh, this is essential before we get into the laboratory environment so please do follow the entire slide deck uh, with me uh, and uh, i would kindly request you not to watch this video at the double speed as one of you have told me yesterday that uh, a 26 minute video has been watched in 10 minutes so that person wants me to give him the username and password for our data science virtual machine if you are not having any kind of uh, patience to watch the video till the end and follow me what i am saying there is no need for me to give you the access to my data science virtual machine because you might end up in destroying this so please please do not do such kind of things you have to watch the videos from the beginning till the end you have to subscribe you have to make sure you make some comments share the videos so that i will know that you have been doing these things and you are actually uh, following my uh, so please do follow me on uh, twitter and of course on the linkedin coming to big data sources just now i said data sources so i i would like to clarify on one thing there is data in the world there is no big data in the world big data is a term that has been coined because a lack of clarity but now there is a huge amount of clarity we call them and call it as data we don't want to call it as big data anymore so let's send a big word behind the screens so the data sources there are different kinds of data sources nowadays once upon a time it used to be only from the databases or or from excel sheets or from access databases etc but now there are different kinds of sources images and media databases locations emails clickstream social networks web pages and uh, sensors from the internet of things right so different kind of things here so we need to understand what are the different kind of sources and when we are looking at the data what kind of data that is and all these kind of things so anyway and different kinds of sources, right so media sources like of social media accounts like facebook twitter linkedin instagram awkward you name it there are a num number of things right so the next one is the cloud there are number of cloud sources uh, so basically uh, amazon uh, they have moved all their data into cloud uh, like uh, google you know you name it there are number several cloud sources then websites so you know, Amazon website, Google website, and you know, just a few examples. Uh, there is huge amount of data. For example, Wikipedia. You have huge amount of data on Wikipedia, and uh, you can do some uh, analysis on the Wikipedia itself. Anyway, we will discuss about all those things. We will do these experiments on uh, uh, the Hadoop data platform and the data science virtual machine and uh, uh, look at these things practically uh, from time to time so please do follow me uh, please do follow my videos 
uh, from the beginning to the end in normal speed and if you don't understand ask me questions if you do understand don't worry about it okay please do forget to comment on my videos and of course the other kind of sources of internet of things like of uh, thermometers uh, temperature gauge gauge machines and then rain measuring equipment and flood measuring equipment and when the oil and gas industry uh, there are certain internet of things which are called pigs i don't know what is the full form of the pig but the pig will be continuously traveling between one place to the other within the uh, pipeline oil pipeline and taking a lot of measurements on the thickness and quality of the pipeline and all these kind of things and uh, the data will be utilized by the actuarial analysts or quantitative analysts or quants and then they will be able to identify and predict if there could be a rupture or a uh, no, uh, fire at some point of time at so and so mile marker or whatever it is so there are huge number of iot sensors uh, uh, that are available uh, for example i work for scottish government now for a, an agency called uh, scottish environmental protection agency and they have a lot of internet of things sensors uh, to measure for example the air quality of a city uh, the uh, is there a possibility of certain area being flooded etc etc number of opportunities right the uh, the amount of the kind the amount of uh, data that is actually collected uh, by this internet of things is huge still it is not big data it is numerical data the, the only thing is volume is bigger Databases, you know, different kinds of databases, MS Access databases, uh, SQL Server databases, Oracle databases, Teradata databases, and Excel databases. You name it. There are a number of databases, right? So, and of course, uh, like me, a uh, number of you have social media profiles across the social media accounts, such as linkedin twitter facebook google etc so we get a huge amount of data from these and of course people uh, like bill gates satya nadella uh, sundar pichai all these people uh, keep writing something or the other uh, in various in, uh, you know, social media normal media print media etc these are the people who are the social influencers. So basically, uh, we tend to follow what they say because we think that they know better than us. Yes, do, they do know better than us. Hence, we do read a lot and we do follow them because they are leaders, right? So uh, data coming from a lot of um, uh, social influencers. Uh, most of the times, the social influencers will be writing blogs and uh, rating their opinions op-eds etc within the social media and uh, print media and electron other kinds of electronic media and of course uh, activity based uh, data uh, like uh, for example if there is a uh, what do you call a marathon that is happening uh, the data is collected from each one of the marathon runners in the form of a tag that they supply and that the tag is tied to some place on the body uh, either on the shoe or on the uh, arm or wristband or whatever it is so that they will uh, they, people will be able to understand how much uh, distance uh, that per particular marathon runner has run and uh, within how much time that marathon has been completed so they will be able to, uh, without actually following you, they will be able to say whether you have followed the correct route. Uh, we have you, uh, how much time it take to for you to uh, go to the uh, finish line, and uh, what kind of, uh, uh, how many times you stop for water, how many times you stop for food, and all what not every uh, lot of things uh, like right so such a such, uh, such kind of things like there are so many other 
uh, things like, for example, smartwatches, uh, they do generate a lot of data based on your movements, the, based on your sleep patterns, based on what you eat, based on your heart pulsations and all these kind of things, right? So, so activity-based generated data. Data warehouse appliances such as uh, NetEase, uh, Teradata, uh, Greenplum, etc. And uh, there are so many of them. And they are likely become an integration target and will assist in enhancing the past and reduced results from your data installations. Right? So uh, look at uh, various aspects, various sources of these data warehouse appliances. Uh, you need to have a basic knowledge of this, uh, what is meant by a data warehouse appliance, how it works and all these kind of things. Uh, uh, this is not the right time for me to explain about all those things. Uh, if you do have any questions, please do send an email uh, ram at xbean.com so that I can answer some of the uh, uh, carefully selected questions with you. Uh, thank you. And uh, let's go to the next slide. So uh, these are the basic uh, data sources that we wanted to see earlier. Uh, so uh, nothing new between the previous source and these sources. And of course, most of the computers are uh, uh, what do you call mobile phones or tablets today. Uh, doesn't matter they are, uh, if they are connected using a uh, wire or not, but all of them are connected through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or whatever it is. So how, what are the different kinds of data that is coming out of these networked uh, computers, uh, handheld devices are such you know, robotic uh, 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 equipment or you name it several things so what kind of data that is coming up and all these kind of things and of course uh, legacy documents I know a friend of mine is doing a research where uh, that person is actually uh, taking a lot of data from the British Library uh, and uh, making a big data project. So one of the environments that we will be discussing is about Hadoop, right? So the reason Hadoop is being discussed in our classes is not because the data science virtual machines will run will be able to run only on Hadoop. Uh, the data science virtual machines can run anywhere uh, on an access database or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever it is. But uh, most of the database softwares, whatever that are there, uh, may not be capable of uh, hosting all kinds of data that I have discussed earlier. Pictures, videos, social media data, different kinds of data, Internet of Things data. If it generally normal databases, they are capable of loading normal data. So uh, right now uh, we have more than the normal data. So we need a different kind of uh, area where we actually uh, store the data. So Hadoop is is such kind of uh, framework. A lot of people ask me or a lot of people understand and a lot of trainers say to uh, the trainee saying that Hadoop is a database. I beg your pardon, Hadoop is not a database. It is a framework. Hadoop has a huge number of components, number of modules within each component. So let us see the most important modules uh, uh, of the Hadoop framework and see how it works, right? I am not going to uh, show you how to program using Hadoop and all these things in this session, but we will do all those things later. At at a later point of time. What I don't want 
you to do is i don't want you to feel that if i say something in the during the laboratory environments you should not be feeling that i'm telling you something new so i want to prepare you before we get into the laboratory environments right so uh, let us break open the hadoop architecture The most important part of the Hadoop architecture is something called YARN. It is an orchestration system. Basically, it's an operating system. This YARN works on the top of the CPU uh, and memory and uh, makes sure that uh, it is a data operating system. It makes sure that data is collected appropriately, data is um, managed appropriately, and data is delivered appropriately. So data collection to data management to data delivery, such kind of things will be taken care by the data operating system. It's like, uh, you know, the soul in a human body or uh, the Windows operating system on the uh, a laptop. Or a Macintosh operating system, iOS operating system, and a Macintosh system, right? Such kind of uh, so Hadoop framework need to have an operating system, which is called YARN. Right? And uh, when you have a, a Hadoop framework, you need uh, that means basically you are dealing with the data. So when you deal with the data, you need to have a place, a storage area where you can store your data. A lot of people talk about Hadoop being on the cloud and uh, uh, a trainer uh, actually started arguing with me that uh, uh, the cloud uh, has, uh, the cloud implementation of Hadoop will have HDFS. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Trainer, uh, whomever I have spoken to earlier, I don't want to tell you the names at this point of time, but HDFS is uh, implemented only if the Hadoop is implemented on the premises. So if it is a cloud storage, it is entirely a different architecture. We have to ask Amazon, for example, S3 ADLS, WASB, GCS, etc. on uh, Google, Google Cloud platforms, Amazon Web Services, Azure Web Services, etc. etc. So uh, it is completely uh, wrong to say uh, HDFS can be implemented anywhere in, uh, in any kind of implementation. If you have implemented your Hadoop framework on premises, then the data storage could be HDFS not everywhere so the next one is is the engines so there is a real time database such as uh, such as oracle teradata etc uh, and uh, we have uh, certain components called uh, hive llap druid etc these are called yarn containers and uh, the other thing is, of course, the, there are machine learning and deep learning platforms such as Apache, Zeppelin, Apache Spark, TensorFlow, uh, and of course, TensorFlow and Hadoop Data Platform uh, is only a tech preview right now. Very shortly, that will be um, that will be uh, released on uh, production platforms. And of course, uh, stream processing, for example, uh, 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 the video that I'm sending you uh, is a stream, right? So that stream, uh, and you want to run certain analytics on this particular video stream, then you would be using Kafka or Storm. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I don't know how many of you have done something uh, like uh, Operational data stores, uh, once upon a time, uh, there used to be something called ODSs uh, when you built uh, data warehouse systems. So uh, you have different kinds of reports to run, right? So basically uh, uh, year-end reports and you know uh, analytical reports, etc., used to be run from the data warehouse uh, powered by the OLAP systems. 
and then you have operational data stores who would be uh, generating operational reports and the ad hoc reports etc and then we do have uh, uh, web apps uh, http services and of course you can create your own uh, applications and uh, make them uh, as part of the apps engine of the hadoop framework right and of course uh, we do need to have the governance as well so the governance is uh, uh, realized using something called apache ranger apache nox and apache atlas so these are the terms that we act uh, what do you call uh, sorry uh, uh, these are the terms that we need to learn understand so basically uh, as you know very well uh, i live in milton keynes my contact number is plus four four one nine zero eight seven six six two three nine if you want to understand certain things please do send me a whatsapp message on this and uh, my email address is ram at xbean.com and please 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 do not send me a whatsapp message to give you a username and password you have to finish a certain set of presentations before i give you the taxes so uh, please do follow all my videos properly uh, you will be tested in the middle of the videos so that will give me uh, actual confirmation that you have been working on those videos and based on that we will be uh, able to create a username and password for you so please utilize this environment and we will go from there thank you very much for listening to me patiently